This is the title page of a famous work by Snellius, he's determining the true circumference of the Earth, he says here. Is the purpose of the work, and he's even announcing himself as the Dutch Eratosthenes in these first two lines. And we remember Eratosthenes was the the, the Greek uh, geometer who determined the circumference of the Earth. So indeed, Snellius is now uh, two thousand years later, almost, is placing himself in that tradition and intends to carry out that same. Uh, this accomplish the same task but now with greater accuracy so it this is uh, another installment in my series about the role of geographical determinism in the history of trigonometry and as in this particular case we shall see that the trigonometrical methods developed by Snellius are again extremely well suited to the particular geographical circumstances of his surroundings namely the Netherlands and so that uh, today I show you this picture of these bicycles in the Netherlands over here uh, because the Netherlands is very famous as an extremely bicycle friendly country today and that is for the same reason in fact that uh, Snellius uh, why you know the, the favorable conditions for bicycles come from the fact that the country is extremely flat so it's no wonder that they have taken to bicycling these people because their country is enormously flat which makes it very easy to bike around you don't want a bunch of hills making it hard work to get from one point to another so and also we shall keep that in the back of our heads and we shall see that the particular trigonometrical methods that Snellius so when we study the details we will s keep this in mind that aha the flatness is a very uh, distinctive feature of the Netherlands and as we can see it has had other influences like the bicycling. So back to the work of Snellius now. Here I'm showing the basic uh, technique that is used in this work is that of triangulation, as it's called, and that's what I've shown in this diagram, which I copied out from the, from the work down here. So he has uh, four different uh, towns, Leiden, The Hague, and so on. Uh, and you see that the fifth problem of the book is that of determining the distance between Leiden and The Hague. And uh, he has... Uh, S divided the uh, the map of the Netherlands into all, all kinds of into triangles like this, determined by the various uh, by the various towns, and then uh, the the whole thing is just a matter of trigonometry or computing lengths of sides of triangles and such. So let's see about the details. And here we have uh, the the full triangular network that he used uh indicated on a an asian map there the netherlands so you know it's not not a massive part of the earth but sufficient for determining the circumference really quite comparable to what Eratosthenes did you know measuring a, a chunk of egypt and then inferring the full circumference of the earth it's similar here with you measure a piece of the netherlands and that will have to then stand for for the be extrapolated to the full earth here again we have the triangular network uh, with all the angular measurements in fact that he took so those are listed over there if you want to uh, double check any values yourself and uh, these points all these points in this network are various towns then so we see uh, you know Amsterdam is AM over here and the Hague uh, uh, Leiden and so on like from the previous slides we can also locate over there on the on the left so then uh, for each of these points the idea then is like it like the table shows measure all angles so the the, the principle is it's cheap to measure angles you can measure an, uh, it's much easier than to measure lengths because if you have to measure length going from one town to the other that's the hard to do with with precision is very costly on the other hand measuring angles is very simple you do it's a one-off thing boom you're done so that is the the principle and in order to measure these angles uh S nelius used church towers so in each of these towns he went up into the relevant tower the highest tower it has usually the tower of the main church and used that to get a clear line of sight from one church tower to that of, of the neighboring town so that you can in this way uh, determine these angles with with precision by measuring from the, the angles between these exact towers 
So here we have then the tower, then, you know, I'm marking one after the other here on this map and showing the various towers that are uh, that that he used. So these, these church buildings like this. So you know, one tall uh, building after the other went into this uh, project. So you had to climb the towers there. And so what? Okay, let's say that we have uh, measured all these um, angles then by looking from one tower to the next. How? What am I going to do now? Let's say that you take one of these uh, distances as a unit of measurement, like I marked in yellow here. Then, if I uh, if I know that uh, distance, uh, maybe I measured once for all, then I can determine these green uh, distances, the rest of the triangle, because I know all three angles. If I know all three angles, it determines the shape of the triangle precisely. So if I know one side, automatically I know the other two, because there's only one triangle with has those three angles and that one side, a yellow side. So I can compute the other two sides. And But then, look, once I have done that for one triangle, the process repeats because then I can use one of these green ones that I computed. I can use in place of the, it's the new yellow, so to speak, that I can use as the beginning of another uh, triangle because I know all the angles of that one too. But then I can keep doing this again and again, you know, so for... As any time I completed one of my triangles, I can just use uh, one of the things I computed as a starting point of another calculation, and so it goes. So, in fact, I just measure one length once, and it propagates through the entire system. I, I only have to measure that one yellow one, and then I know everything. So, I can I can compute all the rest, uh, well I have, uh, as well as the angles, obviously, but in terms of distances, I don't have to actually measure this long distance from north to south, which would be complicated. So, and here we have uh, a typical problem from the book here. So, it says uh, here in the first line, by problem uh, 14, the distance between these two cities is so much, and then the, the by the previous problem, the uh, distance between these other places is this and that. From observations, the angle is so many degrees, and then, th uh, therefore, so uh, it the the goal is going to be then to compute the uh, uh, the particular uh, remaining distances of this triangle, knowing these these factors that from from the previous problem you know uh, certain distances and you know the angle from from your measurement. So that is what the what the uh, what the thing is saying. Uh, so here in in my original uh, it's in, in my previous picture when I showed the grid with the triangulation grid, I use the distance between the Hagen Leiden here, which is marked in yellow, as my uh, starting uh, length. But actually, in reality, uh, Snellius, he didn't even measure that, uh, even though that's a, a lot of an improvement uh, compared to measuring the entire north-south distance. Nevertheless, he didn't even measure this distance, which is still between two towns or something, you know. I, he measured only this very small dashed uh, red length here, which is just in the, uh, at, at the nearest agricultural fields here outside of Leiden where he worked. So he just went into into the fields outside of town and measured these very sm short lengths, this little cross shape. And as you can see, the short side is 328 meters. So the big one is like a thousand meters. And uh, that's all uh, the lengths he ever needed to measure in order to determine the complete north-south distance of this entire uh, uh, grid. The only lengths he ever did were these tiny ones, uh, which which you can do with great precision, 328 meters. You know, you can just use a yardstick and just uh, or a measuring tape and do this. Because it's so short, you can do it with, with ease. And you don't have any problems of obstacles or anything. You can just pick a simple field and do this. And then he used a similar method then as in, as in the big uh, scenario. When you measure this little guy, you make a little triangulation uh, network also in this in a small scale here where you compute for example the yellow uh, distance or some reference distance that you need for the big calculation so in this way it's like a two-step process that eventually gives you this entire network of lengths so what you really wanted to know though for the purposes of calculating the circumference of the earth is the same as in the case of Eratosthenes we remember to compute the circumference of the earth you computed a certain north-south distance and then also determine how uh, 
how big of a part of the total circumference of the Earth that was. And so that is indeed also the process here. So now we have determined this, uh, this can be computed now, uh, the north-south distance, you know, from, from the trigonometrical uh, the result of our trigonometrical triangulation, we can compute this north-south distance and also we determine the difference in latitude between these two positions, which is to say the uh, uh, basically how big of a, a, a chunk of the total circumference of the Earth it is. So it's about one degree, a little more than one degree, so we're going to have to multiply it by almost 360 to get the full circumference of the Earth. And these uh, latitudes were determined using this exact instrument, which is now on display on the Borhar Museum in Leiden. It's a massive quadrant. It has a radius of about two meters. So this is was used for for uh, for for the greatest possible accuracy in measuring the uh, difference in in uh, the the latitude difference, which is uh, uh, determined by using uh, some for example, a reference star or something, and it, uh, measuring is the uh, the angular difference when observing the star from the southern point and from the northern point. It's going to be a slight difference because of the you have moved, the observer has moved. So that's how this thing is uh, was carried out. And uh, here I show the view from the uh, dome tower in Utrecht. Uh, so it's all very flat. As you can see, that's uh, what I try to, to argue. This is why the method works so well. If there were mountains and things, hills even, uh, you know, this method wouldn't work. It assumes that everything is flat for trigonometrical purposes. And it assumes that you have a clear line of sight very far. Indeed, you can easily see, I've been up in this uh, dome tower, you know, uh, uh, this the city where uh, I did my PhD, you know, so went uh, went up here. and. The uh, you can easily see to Amsterdam, for example, which is a 30-minute train ride, so it's you know pretty uh, respectable distance. Nevertheless, you can easily see that make it out in the distance, and uh, you know with then the measuring certain angles. So use Amsterdam as one reference point, and another town for another reference point, and you can measure with uh, very good precision the angular. angles that you need for your triangulation grid. So this is very ideal circumstances for inventing this method would have been, you know, maybe this is how Snellius came up with this idea. Maybe he was up in one of these towers and was looking around and was like, you know, he really started to uh, to feel the, the trigonometry uh, really in the air at uh, this time, you know, possibly. C maybe like the Chinese were looking at their bamboos and we're thinking, wait a minute, wha here we have some similar triangles in the making, you know. So also Snellius were looking at this state of affairs and he realized that triangulation method is uh, a, a brilliant innovation that we can use here to determine the circumference of the Earth in greater precision than ever before. And uh, here I have an indication of some, some people performing this triangulation method of geodesy at a later date, so it's not a standard method. And they are, as you can see, this is what happens when you're not in the Netherlands. These people have to build this big tower in order to have a clear line of sight. So here they are with their little uh, binoculars with the, with the protractor on it there so they can determine all the, the relevant angles and things. And they have, I think, a big lamp, it seems, at, at the foot here. Uh, so if... Uh, Maybe the best way to do these kinds of measurements is at night and with a very strong light. And then you have your friends in two other towers and they also have strong lights. So then it's quite unmistakable. You know, your direction of sight will be very easy then to... Instead of maybe it's not so easy to make it out in daylight exactly where your friends are, but with these powerful lights you can... You know. So that seems to be the idea. Anyway, uh, the uh, so my point is primarily with this picture that you have to build this tower. Look how hard work. All for nothing. If you're in the Netherlands, you already have circles. They're already there. The towers. So that's why it makes a lot more sense that the thing was invented in that country. So uh, here is a little uh, follow-up. So the method of uh, triangulation, geodesy by triangulation, uh, was quickly quickly became a standardized method in standard use after Snellius invented it. And in fact, it was used for example, to determine the shape of the Earth. It was used to draw accurate maps and so on, but also, interestingly, to determine the shape of the Earth, which was a scientifically 
in open question at this time. Uh, so Newton had suggested that the Earth is basically shaped like an orange, which means it's flattened at the poles, kind of bulging at the equator, and it's like somebody took it the poles and pressed it in, smashed it up a little. Whereas Descartes said the opposite. It's more like a lemon, which is the other way around. You know, it's elongated at the poles. It's as if somebody had grabbed the equator and squeezed it very hard so that it becomes uh, elongated, the entire shape of the thing. So this was uh, an uns a, co a dispute then at this time, uh, Newton and Descartes uh, in the 17th century and uh, into the 18th century. It was yet to be determined who was right and the their investigations were underway to determine this and triangulation was the way to go. So in this for for the in terms of the 17th century we can understand why indeed did Descartes believe that the uh, earth was a lemon? You know, this was because of his theory of vortices, his his, his idea of uh, which is illustrated here in his own figure. You know, the idea that um, uh, the solar system is basically a kind of vortex, like when you drain the water in your bathtub, you know, it's just shoo, spirals uh, down like that. And that's basically how the solar system works, you know, it's kind of like a water vortex type of thing. I mean, it's not literally water, obviously, but it's analogous, an analogous kind of scenario, according to Descartes. And that's why the thing becomes a lemon, because uh, the Earth is being pressed up against the wall, so to speak, just like when you're in a car and it's turning very quickly you're becoming squashed up against the, the 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 car door similarly with the earth it's always being pushed around in this vortex all the time and that's why it's being s uh, pressed together at the equator and elongated at the poles because of the uh, the pressure from the, the rotational force that was uh, Descartes theory so he rushed out for that on the other hand Newton argued the other way around that the earth is actually flattened at the poles and this follows from his theory of gravity so here's the the proposition then from the um, uh, from the Principia where he proves this so he imagines then that you drill these uh, tunnels through the earth here in this fashion and and the imagines the the forces that will act uh, in those uh, in those two uh, radial directions and finds that they uh, they come out in such a way that you would expect the earth to naturally uh, to tend to assume the shape of an orange rather than a lemon. So that's a result of the force of gravity and rotational uh, phenomena. So this, the goal was then of the uh, French Academy of Sciences to settle this in 1736. And uh, they sent uh, expeditions for this purpose to two locations, Peru and uh, Lapland in northern Finland, and the and applied triangulation indeed. So you see that they have chosen one location near the equator here, Peru, and then an equation near the North Pole uh, up in the northern Scandinavia. So the idea is to measure, <coughs> for example, one degree uh, worth of, of circumference of the Earth at the at the equator. Is it longer or shorter than one degree worth of circumference up up north closer to the pole? Right? So that's what's going to determine whether the Earth is flattened or not. I mean, if it was perfectly circular, every degree would be equal to every other, but if it's flattened or elongated, it's gonna, they're going to be different, these two. So that uh, was the idea of this, <coughs> this uh, expeditions. And indeed, furthermore, a second, so they chose these two locations, obviously, because one of the is, is close to the equator and the other close to the pole. And another reason is these are mountainous regions. Peru, famous for mountains, and Northern Scandinavia, there are a lot of mountains also so the idea is that you have a situation quite analogous to that of the netherlands when you have uh, uh, mountain peaks as reference points so uh, that's going to to play the role of the church towers you use these mountain peaks so that uh, that's a way to to make it was to make it work also and uh, the the results came out then uh, in favor of newton obviously newton is correct so no wonder since his physical theory is the right one and the curse is wrong so that is also what the French Academy established so such was an application of the method of Snellius of triangulation to uh, determine settle uh, an important scientific uh, dispute <laughs>